So this is my 16 gallon water box in the kitchen. This is where I, my first shrimp ended up and it took me two tries. Uh, the first try, they, they all failed. At least I, I, it's been been a long time now, it's probably been a year. And then the second try, about a month, six weeks later, well, here we are. So well over a year now. And the population stays, I don't know, roughly the same. They all, all pull out when I clean this little filter on the, on the side here, this little internal filter. I'll pull out sometimes as many as 20 little bitty tiny shrimp. And I try and save them all and throw them back in. And there's times where, well, you can see how many there are right here right now. I'll bet if I took this tank apart, I could find maybe 40 or 50. Wouldn't be at all surprised. So it's been a real, real success. Yeah, I wish there was a way to get away from the glare. So this is that little hang, or internal filter in my 16 gallon kitchen tank. And this is the one that always traps lots of little shrimp. So let me show you what I do. First thing I'm gonna do is uh, take off the, uh, why, well, you know, this thing's got a name and I'll be darned if I remember what it is. Spray bar. And I'll stick that in the bucket here. Just give it a quick rinse and then put it up there and I'll wash it off. So then I just slide this thing out. And uh, I'll detach it here. Leave that right here. And then this part I'll put into this bucket that I've put a couple cups worth of tank water in. Okay, so um, there's usually shrimp that come out almost immediately. So just a quick dip on the body here. And then still got this little cartridge with a little bag of uh, charcoal in it, which Charcoal is probably dead by now, but it still holds bio uh, or bacteria. So I'll rinse that off just briefly because I'm going to end up washing all this in the sink. And then the sponge and just a couple quick squeezes of the sponge just to get anything off it if there are any on it. There we go. Now we're gonna let this settle for a few minutes and I'll get a flashlight and show you what's going on in the bottom if there is anything. Well, there's one on the side and like, there's another one that just moved around. So there's at least two in here. So a lot of times I will try and catch them out. And this time seems to be more effort than it's worth. So what I've done is I've got a little five and a half gallon tank um, that I'm just, I've been dumping filter water that I know has shrimp in it and sorting those out. So let's go do that. So I did a little filter cleaning and also some uh, gravel backing in tanks that have shrimp. And I ended up sucking up several I also got a couple little fish fries, so I, I, those were easy to net out. But let's see if you can see that one right where the light is. Let's try and change the light around. Uh, let me even zoom in a little bit. Let's see how that works. There he is. Right over my finger. All right, so that's what I'm doing now. I'm just... Uh, make this go back yeah so what I'm doing now is just taking this water that's got all the filter sludge in it and I will just pour it directly into this tank and what I should have done was netted that one out first because I could see him and, and yeah I wasn't thinking obviously um, this will settle and any others that are in here will uh, will settle to the bottom. Um, I've got this hang on back filter with a pre with a, a fine. Yeah, I got another one here somewhere. A fine uh, 
pre-filter like this versus the coarse one like this. Uh, the coarse one, the really small ones will go right through that. So I, I'm putting a fine one on just to catch all this stuff that's in the water. Um, and then that agitates it enough to kind of keep it going. So then I, will, I can come back through and, and easily net out the ones that land in here. So th this seems to be the easiest way. I have spent half, half an hour or more trying to net really tiny little shrimp uh, out of the bucket with a flashlight and, and that shrimp net after I've gone ahead and, uh, um, um, hello, geez, brain fart. Uh, uh, after I've gone ahead and cleaned the filter uh, in the bucket. So it's just easier. This is just an easier way. And, it, you know, instead of, it's not nearly as laborious or tedious, just kind of let it settle. The only thing I do that I have to do is uh, change this, uh, this pre-filter. And, uh, and that keeps the shrimp from going up inside this filter. One thing I'll do, I'll just, a baggie in here. I learned this watch from Corey on Aquarium Co-op and wrap it right up around the, the pre-filter and there it is. That keeps all the muck on there. Now I got to put this somewhere. I'm just going to set it in the bucket and then here's the other pre-filter. I will just slide that right on and that's good for Actually, in about an hour, I could come back and change that. That would expedite the situation. So now all I have to do is rinse out this pre-filter. And what I will do is pour this out and make certain that uh, no little shrimp ended up on. Let's see, we have the flashlight here. Make sure no little shrimp ended up in here. And then there's one. There's a really tiny one. There's a couple. Uh, they were on the pre-filter. So I will catch those out and I'll put them um, in that measuring cup. If I can find them. Um, I'm just going to get this pre-filter out the way. When I, when I squeeze these out, I stick my finger and my thumb in the hole uh, so keep things from going in the center of it there. Uh, and then I'll, uh, uh, I'll, I'll go take this under the sink and rinse it better. And uh, there are several shrimp in here. That was not the plan, but that's why I um, used the pre-filter. They would have been inside the hang on back otherwise. So I see one really, really tiny. Uh, and there, in fact, there's like three different sizes in here. Plus a little bitty Java shrimp. Or, I'm sorry, Java Moss. And I saved those too. Yeah. Really small little Java Moss. Ah, oh, geez. Really small little uh, Java Fern. Because from these, monsters grow. And I just got a little trough here with lots of Java, uh, Java Fern in it. And they grow. So anyway, I've rambled long enough. I'm going to have to edit the hell out of this to clean up uh, all the flubs. And let me catch the shrimp out of here and I'll show you. On second thought, I'm just gonna pour this back in too. And we'll let it sort itself out. And in case there's any little bitty ones in the bottom there, add a little extra water here. Make sure, because you know, I just hate tossing little, little shrimpies. Um, not my favorite thing to do. So anyway, that's how I do this part. It's the other side of the kitchen tank. So you can just see more of the, the red cherry shrimp in, up in the java fern here. And there's more back in there. And I saw Miss Vanellope von Schwedt pick one off one time. So she probably helps keep the population down a little bit. I like shrimp too, but you know, bigger ones. So there's one under that fern front right there and another one on the Anubias. So there's a bunch of them in here. We'll see them cruising across the gravel. One of the things I really like about shrimp is just 
they cruise right across the center of the tank like they're walking on water. They're just fun. So this is where my shrimp keeping began was in this tank. Um, and, and it's been it's been fun. I've spread out. I'll show you the other tanks. I've got blue dream shrimp and orange sunkiss shrimp as well. Uh, but they it, it, it all began with these uh, <laughs> all these red cherry shrimp. Um, pH runs high. It's about seven five, seven six. Might be a little higher in this tank, or maybe it was once. Because I've got Sirius stone in there, and from what I understand, that can jack up the pH. Um, and the KH, no, the TDS is, if I remember, about 250. Um, and offhand, I couldn't tell you what the KH and GH are. I will test for those, and I'll, I'll include that in here as well. Um, I think a lot of people make a lot more of this than, than really you need to. Um, I've got, this started with, a, I think it was a pond soil on the bottom and then some gravel and then sand, uh, some uh, like fluval stratum. And you can see some of that that's brought up to the surface here, these little dark pellets. Um, and then this white capping sand, and it's not a real thick layer. And then uh, um, some decorative gravel that I just scattered about and everything's scattered around over, over the year, last year and a half. Um, Cause I pulled some plants up and that's pulled things out. Uh, I pulled, uh, I think an Amazon sword out here in front of this piece of, uh, I think it's Mopani. Um, so things have changed, but mostly the shrimp have just done great. And, and um, they've ended up in other tanks. Uh, they've ended up in my that uh, 12 inch cube in the living room. Uh, and I'll show you some of the other tanks where, where they have also ended up. Some have just migrated being attached to plants without even realizing it that when I transfer plants from one tank to another. And I've intentionally taken some of the littlest ones when I've cleaned this filter and put them in this jar, just a one gallon jar and substrate, you know, uh, I think again, a little bit of pond soil and then some gravel and then some sand, uh, probably some fluval stratum and then some sand and then some gravel uh, and a philodendron, a pothos and an anthurium. And uh, since then, and then I've dropped shrimp in here and they, they're not exploding, but they're still doing all right. And uh, then just recently I've dropped a couple ram's horn snails in here just to help keep the, clean the, the glass, the algae, because there's no way to get in here to clean it. So, and I do not want to take this apart. It seems to be doing okie doke. This is my little one foot cube in the living room. And right now they're mostly all hiding but there's probably 20 or 30 shrimp in here. And I populated these uh, from, might've been my, uh, I can't remember, might've been the, the kitchen tank. That's where they all started here at home here. So, and occasionally, I think this tank's sort of balanced about however many shrimp are in it. And we'll see little bitty ones. There's a little tiny one um, right, right over my finger. Uh, and occasionally I'll find a dead one down down in here. Uh, it's not a molting issue. I think maybe it's just a population issue. I really don't know. But they'll uh, once in a while, and it's it's not often, but once in a while, and you'll see them down here in the in the weeds. That's Sagittarius subulata. They like that hanging out in there, feeding on the mulm. And that's where when I feed them frozen brine, a lot of it settles in there. So they go in, or frozen bloodworms, and, and they'll go in there and clean it up. So they're, they're around in this tank. Obviously the side needs to be scraped down here. I need to do a little tank maintenance on this one. Mostly I top it off. And about every week and a half or two, I'll, I'll do about a, oh, I don't know, maybe a, about, about a third to a half water change. But you can see the shrimp back on the rock in there. And, in the Java Java fern, and there's more back on the Java fern back there, and on the glass. So now this tank, they just kind of showed up in, and, and the only thing I can figure is, I moved some plants out of uh, the tank in the kitchen, and God, that's been almost a year ago too. Um, 
there's one little one right there. Uh, and I'm not seeing any right now. They're all, I don't know, they could be up underneath the, this water spangles. But there's, there's a load in this tank as well. See them cruising around all the time. And these are all just red cherries. And then same thing, got a bunch of them that ended up in this tank, this other 40 breeder. And same way, um, they just sort of migrated in with, uh, um, with a plant. And then in, back in this tank, they, they kind of disappeared. So I tried to introduce them uh, and eventually they just took. So now I know there's a lot of shrimp in here and they're just not cooperating right now. But there, there are a bunch. And, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if these guys are picking off the young ones if they can get a hold of them. They could probably put it, you know, anything they can fit in their mouth, they'll probably eat. Um, but they're red cherries. And one thing, you know, I want to mention is um, you know, I've seen a lot of different... In fact, what started this was uh, a Facebook post. And there's a Neo Caridina, uh shrimp group, I guess, that I somehow ended up being part of and um question was uh you know how come all my shrimp are dying and, and nobody bothered to ask and i was only curious you know what what, what are you using for substrate um and, and somebody else chimed in not that not the author of the post uh about substrate and you know uh, i can't even remember what he thought about it but you know the importance of it because it holds that was it because it holds a lot of beneficial bacteria and you know yada 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 and, and it does. Um, and I know, and I've seen, you know, people use that. They call it, I guess it's called a shrimp substrate. And it looks like fluval stratum, the little pelletized stuff. And yeah, okay, that's cool. Frankly, I'm not a fan because I just don't like the look that much. I, I'd much rather see the bottom of a tank that looks like this. Uh, and I like all the plants. The plants end up adding a lot of cover uh, and also hold a lot of beneficial bacteria. Uh, and also provide a lot of food source for the shrimp, the microbes that live in it, whatever else, all the food particles that get hung up in it. Um, this is this is my choice is to have, uh, you know, this kind of a bottom and, and wood. It's nice to have a chunk of uh, driftwood uh, or, or, you know, whatever. And also uh, leaves. I'll throw leaves in tanks. Uh, we have a tree outside that when the leaves drop and they dry, get crispy. Um, I'll rinse them off. I don't bother to boil them. I'll just rinse them off. Eventually they'll sink. The shrimp will just completely eat them down to nothing. Um, we have a chiropractor and he's got banana plants. So he gave me a bunch of dead banana leaves and uh, they were pruning a bird of paradise across the street from us. And, you know, I just went over and grabbed some of the dead leaves from them. And so I'll put chunks of those in. Um, the, the shrimp love those. Also, uh, Indian almond leaves, you know, after it softens, the shrimp will completely break that down. And alder cones, uh, shrimp, I see them picking on those all the time. Uh, the one thing about the alder cones and the Indian almond leaves, they a lot of tannins if you don't boil them, and they'll turn the tank dark, almost like a dark tea. I don't mind that. I know some people do. Um, doesn't bother me at all. This is an Indian almond leaf in the 75 gallon. And I dropped some Blue Dream shrimp in here. We'll get to that tank in a minute. And I saw a big adult the other day and uh, saw the angelfish chasing him. And, you know, I thought I saw one of the smaller ones. And I did see a smaller one up in that little hole between rocks right there a while back. So, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. If these guys can catch them. They're going to eat them. So that probably wasn't a great combination. Uh, Blue Dream Shrimp and uh, Angelfish, that, whatever. So there's a lot of hidey places, little hidey holes and stuff that the, the shrimp can um, can hide in. So I, I'm sure there's some still in here somewhere. I put, God, I don't know, maybe twice, uh, eight or 10 shrimp, two times. Um, first time might've been too soon. All this tank was originally set up with seasoned water from other tanks, but regardless, um, they didn't seem to do, or maybe they were just all hiding really well. So I added some more a month later, and I'm still not seeing a lot of them. So I don't know if it's the angels or they're just not doing well in this tank. That's a possibility. Maybe there's something that this big rock 
uh, kicks out that uh, you know the shrimp don't like. That that's always a possibility. But who knows? I think tanks do need to be pretty well seasoned before uh, you introduce shrimp. And I think a lot of people make that mistake there. And I know I did uh, with the red cherry shrimp. There was my finger in the way there. Sorry about that. Um, on the, the kitchen tank. Uh, that's why I took two goes. And uh, these are Blue Dream in here. And I put, what was it, 10 plus 2, something like that, where I bought them. And... They did fine in this tank right off the bat. Within a month, there were more shrimp. Uh, they've been in this tank, I don't know, six or eight months now. And there's loads, absolute loads of little Blue Dream shrimp in here. And they're doing really well. Um, I uh, put this hang on the back filter. It's on the end right now because there's a lot of mold in the tank. And it's really hard to gravel back with all this going on. Plus, I've got some really tiny little guppies floating around in here. I don't know. I know there's some down here. There's one down in the corner around here swimming around. So, you know, they get sucked up, so I don't like to do that. Um, but they're nice. They just keep going. And then uh, next to it, I got some orange sunkish shrimp. This tank took two goes. And it was pretty well established when I first started it. You can see them all down at the bottom. Second go was a charm. Um, there's a little piece of uh, uh, alder cone right here that's been pretty much eaten down to nothing. Uh, the sticks of wood, they eat the bark off it once it starts getting soft. They'll clean all that right off. Um, and again, I don't boil this stuff. I just rinse it off to make sure there's no dirt on it. I pick it from what I think it, you know, to be a safe location. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, these guys... They're obviously doing really well. There's some big ones back on the tank tank walls back here. Um, I think what I'm going to do actually is is start putting these up on eBay and uh, sell them 10 plus two, you know, for both the Blue Dream over here, the Orange Sun Kiss, and then the Red Cherries that I have. And I've got more Red Cherries in this tank here, um, and I don't know why, but I <laughs> I do, uh, and I put some. I've got this tank of uh, uh, Mickey Mouse platies, and they're all orange, so I thought, what the heck? Put some uh, orange sun kissed in here, and there's one. Let's see if I can get them right there, and there should be more. And these are pretty good size. Those look like females, so they're probably going to start uh, giving me offspring in this tank. Oh, they already are. Let me come around here. There we are. Oh, gosh, there's the younger ones on the glass right there. Um, yeah, okay. Right there. Another one right there. A couple down below. So they're happening. And there's a bunch. A load on this side. And this is a glass bottom tank. Um, and there's more on the side of the tank right there. And so there's, you know, different, I guess, just different theories about that. Um, I like the substrate. I like the sand and gravel substrate because I like the way it looks. But I think just uh, if you're going to raise shrimp for uh, fun and profit, probably uh, just a glass bottom tank works well because I think it makes them easier to collect. Um, and that was what that other person on Facebook was going back and forth about was... Uh, uh, you know, there's nothing to hold the beneficial bacteria. However, uh, I think the first time I saw anybody uh, using just all glass would have been uh, uh, Nick from Keeping Fish Simple, you know, doing one of his videos about raising cherry shrimp. And he's got all glass bottom tanks and he'll drop a pot with a plant in it. Like, I don't know if you can see that all the way in the back back there is a terracotta pot with a uh, substrate in it and a bunch of crypts and and he'll drop a piece of wood in um, and all that's going to hold and a sponge filter that's all he uses and that's all going to hold uh, loads of beneficial bacteria and uh, give uh, a food source <coughs> excuse me you see shrimp feeding on the uh, sponge filters all the collected particles uh, and also uh, off the wood and in the plants and then 
on the glass. So, you know, if you've got a, a tank that's showing just the ends like this, you know, you keep the ends clean so you can see in. And, you know, if it's in an area where you need to keep, keep three sides clean, you know, that's great. And leave one, you know, one side, the back, let it grow the algae on it because they'll feed on that. They love that. And it's good for them. It's a good food source. Uh, and again, it collects uh, beneficial bacteria, that algae, and it also collects, uh, uh, you know, uh, microbes that they can feed off of. So anyway, I just thought I'd share, you know, my two cents on the whole, the whole shrimp thing. And this was all started from that Facebook post that I saw on the Neocaridina um, page or group, whatever it was. And I'll go see if I can find it and I'll, I'll link it in this video. Um, if you're interested, you can always go join it. I have nothing to do with it. I'm just, you know, one of the, I, I don't know, I guess a contributor. Or mostly all I've been doing is, uh, um, you know, just commenting on other people's posts, you know, and I, I like to keep it to where, uh, um, you know, keep some science involved, ask some questions instead of just come off with a, you know, half-baked, uh, and that's a lot of times what you see on, on you know, group, uh, Facebook group posts is a lot of half-baked opinions. So we'll keep those down to a bare minimum and, you know, go at them with some knowledge and some science. Uh, and mostly what I share is how I do it and what works for me. And I will often share also what doesn't work for me because, uh, you know, that's a great learning experience, how something did not work. Um, what can we do to uh, to make it work, to rectify the situation? I think that's really important. So anyway, like I said, too, my pH runs about 7.5. Uh, and I'm going to do, I, I said I do the cage and the GH. So let's do that right now. I'm just going to use the strips. I've got these uh, API 5-in-1 test strips. And we'll test one of these tanks here. The water in these two tanks ought to be almost identical. So, which one, right or left? Um, left. It looks a little cloudier. So, no, right. It looks a little cloudier. Let's go. Let's go with that one. Let's, for whatever reason, I pulled a bunch of guppy grass out of this tank, the right tank, uh, today, uh, and it stirred a bunch of stuff up. I'm selling guppy grass on an eBay. Uh, eBay store that I have. So one, two, and it's out. All right, and let's see. Um, we're going to put this here, lay it on its side. So the pH is at the top. So you can see how dark the pH is. It's, I'm sorry, that's, uh, am I holding this thing backwards? GH, KH. Oh, the pH is in the middle. One of the orangey ones. So you see it looks 7.5, thereabouts. Uh, the, the GH is at least 180. The KH is probably right around also about, what's that say, 180. I'm too far away to see with my eyes because <laughs> they don't work that well. And uh, virtually no nitrites and no nitrates either. Uh, I don't really worry about those two too much. Uh, we have about often, I think it's about 20 ppm nitrates that come out of the tap, and that's legal. I think that was the, the number, uh, but I don't worry about that too much. That breaks down with all the plants. It, it's absorbed with all the guppy grass in there, and I put that guppy grass in, uh, like I was talking about in the other tank, uh, with plant cover, because look at the shrimp and the plants. You know, they they hang in those. Uh, you'd be able to see shrimp in the guppy grass there and also along the edge of the tank. So plants are, I think, a real added benefit to having uh, to, to having shrimp. I think the shrimp just really go for it. But anyway, I've rambled on long enough, and I hope you got something out of this, and I'd love to hear your feedback, your comments. Um, see what you think. Let me know what you think about this whole thing. Do you keep shrimp? Um, I know some people are terrified too. You know, it's not that big a deal. Uh, <laughs> I guess I'm not in it yet. Uh, when I bought these, they were on, um, uh, I think I got them on Amazon. Same vendors on on Instagram, but their Amazon price was better. Uh, and 
oh god, I don't know what it was. I think it was under 25 bucks for 10 plus two, and free shipping. So I don't know how they can make money like that, but they are, because uh, these things breed like cockroaches. And uh, it, you know what? Uh, if uh, if you got a tank that's been well seasoned and it's been set up for you know several months. And you want to give sh shrimp a shot? Go for it. The only thing you would really probably want to consider are big fish, because you know they will, they might eat them. Um, but the shrimp uh, and small fish, nano fish, they go really well together. Uh, plecos, not a problem. Uh, Corys, I've got Corys and Plecos in this tank, and I've got Corys and Plecos in most of my tanks, and not a problem with the shrimp. They're compatible, you know, with a lot of different fish. The one thing I would say is if you got a tank full of knuckleheads like these and you got little bitty shrimp, they will go for them because they are relative, relatively predacious. But anyway, that's enough. Let me show you what the TDS is in here. Um, we'll do this tank. So it's over 200. This is uh, 204, 202, 204. So yeah, 203. Just split the difference. So I'm, I don't want to drop the whole thing in. That would suck. Yep. Two twelve. I think I saw it at two fifteen. Also. So a high TDS. Um, and I'm thinking that helps with molting. Uh, the high GH. The high high. TDS. Uh, I, I've never had problems with shrimp not being able to molt. I think that's a big deal. Uh, and I think that's where a lot of people have problems with. So I'm guessing with softer water, it might be an issue uh, trying to keep shrimp in that. Um, so, you know, and one thing I'm not really great is I don't have a great understanding of uh, uh, the GH and the KH and, and soft and hard water. Uh, we have a high pH, so our water tends to be a little on the aquan side. So I guess that's, you know, that's harder water. Plus, you know, we've got the hard water deposits, the calcium, um, that comes up on stuff. You know, shows up around the faucets and water spots on things. Um, so that's all, you know, that's all part of it. But that's good for the shrimp. Works out well for them. So that's one of the big drawbacks with shrimp. If they can't successfully molt. They will die, so a lot of times people lose their shrimp right away uh, in the initial maybe 30 days or so when you know shrimp are trying to molt because they're an, uh, an arthropod and arthropods uh, molt, right? They they shed their exoskeleton and that with these you know they're they're uh, the eggs are carried under the female and they're hatched under the female and dropped live live birth and and they look. Uh, just like they do as adults, just teeny weeny, a technical term. And then uh, uh, they they grow a little bit, they they molt, their uh, exoskeleton burst open, out comes a slightly larger shrimp, it expands a little bit more, uh, the exoskeleton hardens, they go on for a while, I don't know how long, weeks maybe, and then they molt again uh, until they get to, you know, like a big adult size. And I'm not sure. I think I've seen where these things will live maybe as much as three years. I, you know, I couldn't tell you. I don't know. You know, um, I, I haven't had them that long yet. And I don't know how the hell you'd keep track of, you know, one shrimp. Um, I guess short of having it all by itself. And I'm not going to do that. They look really good in colonies and they like being in colonies. They're, I, you know, I guess you could call them little social creatures amongst themselves anyway. Uh, and they get along really well with the fish. And once in a while, I'll see them riding on a fish, which is always fun to watch. See them parked on a pleco or, you know, hanging out with the little uh, autosynclus. Uh, anyway, so that's that's how, you know, just stuff to think about if you're looking to set up shrimp. And, and you know, if, if you have any doubts, I would say just go for it. You know, it's, it's, it's not, if again, if you've got a well-established tank, they're not that expensive. Just do it, you know. Just get some and, and enjoy the hell out of them because God, they're fun. Uh, now, getting into caradinas, I guess that's a whole other ball game. I know squat about that. These are all neo caradinas, and so that's that's something you know that uh, 
I can speak about a little bit. But anyway, I, again, just just go for it and enjoy them. What do I feed my shrimp? And here we go. <laughs> the plecos and the corys and the guppies are moving in. And the shrimp are just smaller, so they get pushed out. But eventually, they will be all over these algae wafers. Uh, you can see here, I just dropped these in, and these orange sunkissed have already found their way. I really like these. Uh, so that's a good source. Uh, also, I think I already mentioned uh, pieces of wood bark on, and uh, the shrimp will feed off the bark. They'll feed off the biofilm that, that starts on the wood when it's first dropped in, and then as that dissipates, because they're eating it for one, um, they'll, they'll eat through the bark as it softens. They'll also um, uh, eat algae. Um, I have a big branch up here of manzanita with some bucephalandra on it, and it got covered with an algae, and I dropped it in the tank behind me. I'm just gonna spin around here and make everybody seasick. Uh, a bunch of red cherry shrimp and they clean that algae right off. Um, and then I ended up putting, putting it back in this tank after I got the algae problem kind of taken care of in that tank. Um, so that works. Leaves, um, I grab leaves out of the front yard and ones that are well dried. Um, don't put green leaves in, at least I don't think you should. I'm not sure, but it's probably best that you don't. Uh, and I don't bother to boil them. I just rinse them off and drop them on the water. They eventually sink, uh, and the, the shrimp will completely skeletonize them. Now you could use Indian almond leaves that people use to you know make the water really tannic. Uh, I guess those are supposed to be good as an antimicrobial, too, in tanks. Um, but fish food, any, any residual fish food they'll move in on. Uh, carcasses. Uh, if a fish dies, another shrimp dies, and shrimp die. I've, I've been watching these posts on this uh, Facebook page, and people are just blown away that one of their shrimp died. And it happens all the time. They don't have a real long life expectancy. And that little uh, one-foot cube tank that I showed you with the red cherries in it, uh, once in a while, and I think I mentioned, I'll, I'll see a dead shrimp down front uh, in the Sagittarius subulata, and I just leave it there because uh, the other um, the other shrimp will, will eventually feed on it. It's a source of calcium. Uh, the, I guess it's called carotene in their exoskeleton. Uh, uh, they'll feed on it and that helps ensure, I love this pleco and he's got shrimp piggybacking there on him. Uh, but they'll, they're probably cleaning him uh, or her, it. Um, so that's a source of uh, uh, of calcium uh, to help ensure a good mold. Um, and there's other other ways to go about that, and I don't know a lot about that. I haven't had to deal with any molting issues in my water because, I, as I said, I've got a high GH and high, high KH, um, and there's enough, I guess, free calcium, uh, get calcium deposits in the plumbing and stuff like that, so that's not an issue here. Uh, I guess you could drop a chunk of coral in if you needed to. There's probably other things. I, I would, you know, research that if I had that issue of uh, shrimp not molting good. I'm sorry, molting well. Uh, but anyway, um, what else? I, I guess, you know, yeah, if, if a fish dies, you know, if it's a small enough fish, I'll leave it. They'll, they'll clean it off uh, down to nothing. Uh, they are, you know, nature's little cleanup crew, nature's little scavengers. Uh, so they will take care of all that. And, and I think that's... Uh, you know, that's one of their really pluses. Aside, they're just fun to watch. Uh, they are, they're just great little assets to a tank. Uh, I love watching them just walk through the water. They're very cool. They are very cool little creatures. And, uh, you know, somebody was asking about plants and, and, uh, on this Facebook group, and I chimed in with uh, guppy grass. is a great, uh, a great plant. They just, they love it. Uh, you can see them all in the guppy grass. Guppy grass holds a lot of biofilm and uh, probably a lot of micronutrients and algae builds up on it and uh, they just feed on it. And it's a great place for them to hang out. Uh, those are the blue dream. And then in this tank, and the light always gets in the way here, but the orange sun kiss. 
up right at the surface. Um, so anyway, just thoughts on on uh, um, on feeding these guys and things that happen to them. They do die. Uh, so when they do die, don't freak. Uh, and I said earlier on this this tank, I I did it in one go. Uh, I got uh, ten plus I don't know one or two or three uh, uh, Blue Dream from the vendor I bought them from, uh, and, and they were off right away. And within a month or so, uh, I had little shrimp. Uh, the orange sun kissed. It took me two goes, and it probably took me about two months, maybe pushing three after that, that I started seeing a little shrimp. Uh, so, one thing I learned about shrimp keeping: uh, patience. It, it does require some patience. You just gotta hang out, you know, wait. Sometimes the best thing to do is don't look. Uh, you know, I heard somebody else saying, I've got shrimp in my tank and I can't see them. Well, you know, that happens too because they can be elusive and there's nothing wrong with that. They'll eventually, you'll get to a spot where there will be so many, there's no place to hide, which is kind of a cool, kind of a cool thing. One of those quality problems. Here's a molt right there. Uh, let me see if I get my finger on that. Where'd it go? Right there in the, hanging in the guppy grass. That's an old molt from one of the shrimp. Uh, and it's really starting to break down and uh, they're probably chewing on it and eventually it'll be gone. So just some thoughts about, you know, general keeping. That's a nice big one on the, uh, on the sponge filter, a couple nice big ones. Now it's probably getting ready to molt with that line down the back. Um, I don't know if I can get a better view of it here. Got that reddish brown line on the back. And, and the blues seem like once in a while they'll kick out a really, which is uh, blue head, blue tail, and like a clear middle section. Um, and uh, I haven't seen that yet with the oranges. Uh, maybe I just haven't seen it yet. Maybe they're there. Um, but I guess it's not uncommon too for uh, oranges to kick out a yellow once in a while, and you know, because they breed like cockroaches. And out of the blues, probably not uncommon to get a black or red or and in my reds I will get super dark reds almost almost this uh, blue sometimes too so there's variation, all the colors are hybrids from what I understand and uh, the species are more just a I don't know, almost kind of like a brownish, clearish so I just wanted to share with you some of my well I wanted to share with you my shrimp um uh, and some of my thoughts on, on the shrimp and, and how to keep them, how I keep them, I should say, uh, what I do, what I've noticed, some of my observations. Um, and, and, you know, when it comes right down to it, uh, I think a lot of people panic and yeah, maybe a little bit at first, but uh, honestly, I think uh, they're dead simple. One of, the, one of the big key takeaways here for me was uh, um, make sure the tank's been around for a while. Make sure the water's really well seasoned. Stuff can still happen. Uh, you could still lose all your shrimp in one shot. Um, but make sure, I think your odds are better if, you know, the water's a couple months old, maybe in the tank. Um, yeah, we do water changes, so it's not, you know, the whole thing. But the tank's established, there's a good level of beneficial bacteria. I used to use this stuff, and I don't have the bottle on me, called E.A. Bacter, and I'd seen that in my early days of this, uh, and it's a, a way of introducing a bio slime. I guess it's a, a dormant bacteria in kind of a powder form, make a slurry, uh, it comes with a little scoop, you make a slurry, and then uh, add a little more water and dilute it and pour it in your tank. And it attaches to everything, it gives something for the, the shrimp to feed off of uh, until there's a good bio slime produced. You just wait and uh, make sure you got some stuff like plants and for me lots of plants uh wood leaves all that stuff uh that's all going to provide a lot of bio slime a lot of natural food source for the shrimp um and i'm trying to think of something else that i was going to say oh yeah you know plan on losing a couple uh plan on buying 10 or 12 at a time uh to get a better shot you will get males and females that way you might get lucky and even get some buried females uh, in your order. Um, and if not, with 10 or 12, most people, God, I'm hoping, 
not, but I'm thinking most, most vendors don't sex the shrimp. So you're going to get a good random selection. Um, and, and uh, you know, that, that's kind of nice. Uh, and with, with, you know, 10 or 12 shrimp, uh, you're going to, you got good odds of, of ending up with, uh, uh, females that, you know, inside of a couple months, depending on how small they are, uh, should be buried. Uh, you know, as, as small as some of the shrimp in, in, uh, part of this video are where I was showing you the, uh, the plecos and the guppies and the little blue dream shrimp feeding on those algae wafers. Some of those are, you know, a couple months away from, from being uh, reproductive size. So be patient, you know, it just takes time and just enjoy them for what they are in the meantime, because they're just so much fun. Anyway, that's pretty much my two cents on the whole subject of, uh, you know, keeping cherry shrimp, neocaridina, uh, neocaridina shrimp. And the ones I have, uh, just a quick recap, are the red cherries, uh, blue dream and orange sunkist. And I guess I could call some of the reds I have fire reds, and you know, there's all these sexy names out there, but uh, they're red cherries. And, and some of them are just really dark and really cool. And that's out of the same original batch that I started with uh, the second 12, because the first 12 didn't make it. So it's just that easy, go for it. Uh, and, and you know, uh, let me know what you think. Let me know uh, what kind of luck you've had or are having with your shrimp. Uh, you know, and, and just, just go for it. Keep it coming. Thanks. I take that back. Thanks. Thanks for looking.